In this video, I'll be going over an example on building mathematical models for the cooling um, experiment. And we're looking at concrete. So when you're making concrete, say for paving, the temperature of the water can impact the strength of the concrete. And most procedures will have a, a range of acceptable temperatures. And in this example, the range of temp acceptable temperatures goes up to about 72 degrees Fahrenheit. But in the heat of the summer, water can be warmer. And for this example, we have a reservoir at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And they want to use that water at 80 degrees, but before they can use it, they need to cool it down. The idea is to dump it a bunch of ice into the reservoir, um, bring the temperature down, they can mix their concrete, pave their road, and, and get on their way. So in the simplest terms, we're, we're looking at a reservoir of water, and I'll just diagram it like a, a cup of drinking water. And in that reservoir, we're going to dump an ice cube, a lot of ice cubes, I suppose. And over time, that ice cube is going to melt. Melting is an endothermic process, so we're going to have a heat flow into the ice cube. And as that heat flows into the ice cube, two things are going to happen. The first stage is it's going to melt. And the second stage is it needs to warm up from 32 degrees Fahrenheit, sort of the freezing point of water, up to that final temperature of 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, sort of two stages. So the heat that comes out of the reservoir, what's going to happen to the reservoir? The reservoir is going to warm or, or cool from 80 degrees Fahrenheit down to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. That's sort of what we're looking at. Now there's a whole bunch of other things that could be happening here. So we could have um, the ice cube evaporating. We could have the water evaporating. We could have heat coming from the air into the water. We could have heat coming from the air into the ice cube. We could have solar radiation that's coming in and warming the ice cube and or the water. Um, we could have heat loss to the ground or gain from the ground, a whole bunch of different factors. And what we're doing in this model is we're saying, we're just dumping the ice in, all these other things should re remain more or less the same, so let's ignore them for now. And we're gonna focus on these sort of three pieces. Now the relationship between these pieces is these two processes taking in heat, get all their heat from the reservoir. That's the assumption. So the Q reservoir will be the sum of the Q from melting and the Q from warming the water. Sorry, not all the water, just the water that came from the ice cube. And so that relationship or that connection between these three pieces is the key bit. Now I've made one mistake here, and that has to do with direction. Is the water leaving the reservoir and moving into the ice cube and the, the water that results from melting? And putting that minus sign indicates the direction from these two perspectives is um, different. This little piece, we can then look at each of the components and how what we know about them equation-wise is for both the reservoir and warming the water after it's melted, this is a relationship of heat and temperature change. So this is going to be the Q is MC sub S delta T. And over here, the same thing. Now the melting is a phase change. The heat required for that phase change, we're going to need a heat of reaction. In this case, a heat of fusion. And I gave you a value for that, um, which was 0 0.334 kilojoules per gram of water. Okay, and that I'm going to use with dimensional analysis. That's going to be a unit conversion. So now I have three pieces that make up um, this model, and it's not perfect. There's other factors that could play in, but it should describe pretty well the flow of heat out of the water in the reservoir into the ice, and then warming the resulting melted ice 
into the, the final temperature. Okay, so let's go to some specifics for the problem. Apply this structure to solve the problem. Okay, so this is the reservoir. It's 80,000 gallons. 80 Fahrenheit down to 72 Celsius. And we're interested in how many pounds of ice. So because of the equations I'm using, I know I need to get those temperatures into Celsius. And 80 degrees Fahrenheit is 26.7 degrees Celsius. 72 Fahrenheit is 22.2 degrees Celsius. Now the amount of water in gallons I need to do some conversions on because for both of these equations I'm going to want to know how many grams. That's how the units on my constants. So that 80,000 gallons, where did it go? There it is is 3.028 times 10 to the 8 grams. Now that's too many sig figs. It's probably a, let's say it's a roughly a 10% uncertainty. Um, so we'll do two sig figs. Okay, and now I can start piecing them together. I'm going to do a couple assumptions. I'm going to put in the amount of ice as a variable. I'll just label as x grams. I don't know how much ice I need. It's x grams, and we're going to calculate each of those three terms in terms of that variable number of grams. Now, the warming the water didn't matter, so let's do the reservoir first. And the reservoir was a change in temperature, so I'm going to use the Q as M, C sub S, and then delta T would be T final minus T initial. So my mass was 3.028 times 10 to the 8 grams. C sub S, we'll just use 4.184 joules per gram Celsius. That's a value for pure water, and I, I'm going to assume the water in the reservoir is close enough to pure water as doesn't matter. Certainly within 10%, that should be true. And then my final temperature is the lower temperature, it's cooling, so 22.2 degrees Celsius minus 26.7 degrees Celsius. So 22.2 minus 26.7 comes out to be 4.5, and that's useful to do first um, because you need to pay attention to significant figures. And this is really going to end up being one sig fig. I started with degrees in Fahrenheit. Um, I carried over an extra digit, but there's really one sig fig coming out of this. And that's okay. It's, it's a rough estimation. Um, so you punch in all these numbers, and I got negative 5.702 times 10 to the 9 joules. So that's a lot of joules. And we're looking at one sig fig at this stage. This is how much heat is flowing along that arrow. To determine what happens on the other end, we need to calculate each piece. And this is where we needed to make that assumption of just a variable x grams. So let's start with the melting. When we look at melting, it was going to be dimensional analysis, and we were going to go from grams of ice to joules of heat. Relatively simple single step, and in this example we have x grams of ice, and for every one gram of ice, according to the heat of fusion in the one in canvas is 334 joules, so it takes 334 joules of heat to melt one gram of ice. And so we get 334 times x joules of heat. The grams of ice will cancel. Okay, and then the warming. Now think about putting the ice in a bag, like a Ziploc bag, and you dump it in there, the ice melts. There's some water that's in the bag, and then there's the rest of the cup. That water in the bag is the 
the water from the melted ice. And as soon as it's done melting, it's going to be at um, 32 Fahrenheit or 0 Celsius. And now there's going to be additional heat coming from the reservoir into that water in that bag to warm it up to the temperature of the rest of the water. And in that case, it's going to be another Q equals M C sub S delta T. In this case, the mass is X grams, 4.184 joules per gram Celsius. The final temperature is going to be that 22.2. It's going to be where we want the final temperature of the reservoir water. And it started at 0 degrees Celsius. It doesn't start at this 26.7. This was the water that melted from the ice, and that phase change occurs at zero degrees Celsius. So this is two sig figs, 22.2 degrees Celsius, times 4.184, um, times x, and where did I write that down? That came out to be 92. 92.88x, two sig figs, joules. Now we can go back to that equation. We figured out each of the little pieces for this problem. And that equation we had there, we can take the negative of the Q reservoir, so 5.702 times 10 to the 9 joules, It was negative, and I'm taking a negative Q, is equal to 334x joules plus 92.88x joules. Okay, so the 334 plus 92.88 came out to be 426.88 joules, or sorry, x, forgot the x there. Okay, so there and there, we can divide both sides by 426.88 joules, and we get x is equal to 1.336 times 10 to the 7 grams. Okay, remember we had units of grams for that x value. And so 1 times 10 to the 7 grams. And just for reference, this ends up being about 30,000 pounds. So this um, construction company is going to need about um, 15 tons of ice to dump into the, the reservoir. Um, and that wait a little while and it should cool off by approximately four and a half degrees Celsius to give them their um, their cool water to mix their concrete. So we did a problem using this model of how much ice needs to be added to drop the temperature. We could use that same connection of equations, that same Q of the reservoir is equal to Q melt plus the Q for warming that melted water. We could use that same thing to predict a final temperature after we added a specified weight of ice. That would let us calculate how efficient it was, how much of the um, heat went into the ice um, and how much of the ice melting was from the air or something like that. We could do a number of things once we've simplified our system to a, a mathematical model.